Hi, I'm Andrew Kane, State Politics Editor at the Richmond Times Dispatch. With me is my colleague, politics columnist Jeff Shapiro, and we're here to talk about primary night. So, Jeff, the polls are about to close, and uh, I understand you've been out and about taking some soundings. What's what's your first impression? Uh, what if they gave a primary and no one came? Uh, the turnout has been very thin. Um, I visited about a half dozen precincts in Richmond uh, through the day. Um, ghostly uh, is how I might describe uh, some of these uh, some of these precincts. I don't know that this is surprising, uh, given that it is basically a single party affair for the most part. The most activity is among Democrats and for Senate nominations. In fact, our colleagues at the Virginia Public Access Project noted today that low turnouts in these off-year legislative primaries are the norm. And uh, in fact, the highest turnout they've had in any single contest since 2015 is 15%, and some of them is, have been as low as 2%. Uh, given the expected low turnout, um, that's caused some trepidation in one local contest. Yeah, there are, uh, you know, there's that kind of conventional wisdom that somehow a lower turnout favors an incumbent. But of course, we have brand new districts and we have brand new voters and a lot of confusion uh, and, and maybe to some degree uh, a lack of interest. What this translates to in the Richmond area is what is viewed as a surprisingly competitive race between Lamont Bagby, a freshly elected senator in an old district, also the chairman of the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus, and his opponent, Katie Gooch, from here in the city. Uh, one wonders if uh, perhaps wild card in, in that uh, election is a distinctly local issue, whether Richmond uh, should have a second go at a casino. Well, quickly touch base on uh a couple other contests to watch up in Northern Virginia, where several Democrats face uh, significant challenges from the left. The first of these would be George Barker. He's the co-chair of the Senate Finance and Appropriations Committee, and he faces Stella Pekarski, who is uh, a member of the Fairfax County School Board. Yeah, George Barker has barely 6% of his old district in this new district. And in Northern Virginia, where you know people are and voters are stacked up like cordwood and the focus is largely federal. How does a state legislator break through all that? Uh, and how does this particular legislator introduce himself to a school board member who one would think in a place like Fairfax where everyone seems to be vested in the school system might have some advantage. And Pekarski represents about half of that district on the school board. Uh, quickly, a couple others to note, Dave Marsden, uh, another longtime Fairfax senator faces Heidi Drauschek, who founded Crowd Lobby. Um, also, Jeremy McPike uh, from Prince William County faces another stiff challenge from Delegate Elizabeth Guzman. Yeah, and that's a very much a race about, you know, Virginia's new demographics. Uh, Prince William County is the second largest jurisdiction in the state. It is also majority non-white. And a guy like McPike hasn't had a lot of competition in the eight years or so he's been a senator. Um, he's being taken on by someone who literally speaks the language of, of new, new Prince William County. It's also wired into the, uh, the union vote up there, which is still fairly robust. And the last one we'll mention for now is a contest in Prince William County between two well-known Democrats who previously sought statewide office. Jennifer Carroll Foy is a former delegate who ran for governor in 2021, and she's in a primary with Hala Ayala, who ran as the Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor uh, in 2021. So I want to thank Jeff Shapiro. Please stay tuned to Richmond.com for results throughout the night and into tomorrow morning.